Hi everyone, it is 6.01 on a Thursday morning, one day closer to the weekend. Woo -woo. Woo -woo. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Channing Curtis. Well, speaking of the weekend, we need to know what the forecast is going to be like. And meteorologist Thomas Patrick, man, you had a very busy Ooh, so day busy. yesterday. It was a very active weather day. What does today have in store for us? Yeah, though? well, it's already a little bit busy this morning, even though there's just two, three shower thunderstorm cells. It's always enough to keep us on our guard. And if you're in Spokane Valley, you're probably saying, where's all this rain coming from? A shower cell developed directly over you in Spokane Valley, whereas the rest of us are just enjoying another mild dry morning. In the meantime, you see dry conditions out at Silverwood theme park, 66 and mostly cloudy skies at the airport observation. But this is the live look at I-90 on Pines Road, an absolute soaking commute for those that are traveling directly through there and it's just a small little shower cell but a big downpour especially directly over that area and it is not moving either in fact if we zoom in even farther you can see it hugging that highway 27 pines road area right over spokane valley so if you are traveling through there on i-90 you definitely have to be a little bit cautious because the roads got wet very very quickly and that shower cell is not moving very fast either as we pan off towards the north and towards North Idaho, there are a couple thunderstorm cells for Bonner County and to the east of the Sandpoint region. So you're probably seeing some of that lightning in the distance. And if you're on Highway 95 between Sandpoint and Bonner's Ferry, same story. You're going to be running into some decently heavy rain there. As for the next dozen hours, we are tracking not just a couple scattered showers this morning, but more thunderstorm chances primarily for the afternoon hours after 3 o'clock today. Well, this morning, almost all abortions are illegal in Idaho, but just hours before the abortion ban was set to take effect, a federal judge put a pause on part of the law. Certain sections of the law caught the attention of the Biden administration, so they sued the state of Idaho asking for an injunction. So this morning, our sister station in Boise is explaining what happened and why. Idaho's near total abortion ban says every person who performs or attempts to perform an abortion commits the crime of criminal abortion. It allows for few exceptions in cases of incest or rape reported to law enforcement or where the doctor determined in good faith an abortion was necessary to prevent the death of the pregnant woman. The U.S. Department of Justice claims that last clause, the death of the pregnant woman, is too narrow and violates the Federal Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act, or EMTALA, which requires anyone needing emergency medical treatment get it, including a pregnant woman. The DOJ lawsuit hinges on the fact Idaho's law provides no exception for the health of the mother, only her imminent death. In Wednesday's ruling, U.S. District Judge Lynn Windmill agreed and put a pause on just that part of Idaho's trigger law until the lawsuit runs its course through the courts. Meaning, an Idaho doctor can perform an abortion if the woman's health is at risk. All other instances, outside rape or incest, will still be illegal. And of course, this morning, people all over the country are reacting to this decision. The Idaho Democratic Party chair wrote, I am relieved to see the court take this step to ensure that every Idahoan receives necessary medical care in an emergency and that every pregnancy is unique and Idahoans deserve leaders who will protect their freedom. Now, Idaho Republican Representative Megan Blanksma shared her disappointment with the decision, saying to protect the lives of as many of these children as possible, the Idaho legislature will pursue all legal means to bring this injunction to an end as quickly as possible. Now, last night, the United States Department of Justice also released a statement. Attorney General Merrick Garland reiterated their argument that Idaho's law violates the Emergency Medical Treatment and Active Labor Act, saying that the Department of Justice will continue to use every tool at its disposal to defend the reproductive rights protected by federal law. Now, as of this morning, again, abortion is still nearly illegal in Idaho. However, the trigger law pause will be in effect until a permanent judgment is issued. The new Idaho abortion law is the first time in nearly 50 years that almost all abortions in Idaho are now illegal. It's 6.05. Let's take a look at your morning rush. More news in less time. New overnight, Spokane Public Schools voted in favor of installing vape sensors in their high school bathrooms. This comes after an increase in students vaping. The sensors will detect any vape it's in the bathroom. An email and text will go to staff to check on the situation. 
Right now, there's an urgent need for blood donors in North Idaho. By Talent, a nonprofit that provides donated blood to hospitals throughout the Inland Northwest, says the number of regular donors plummeted in the last decade. Donors dropped from 100,000 to about 23,000 per year. For context, more than 200 donors a day are needed to maintain a five-day supply in the region. This morning, Zag fans are anxious to see what happens with Chet Holmgren's injury. The GU alum is undergoing tests for a possible injury to his right foot. Holmgren played in a Pro-Am game in Seattle on Saturday with multiple NBA stars. While defending a LeBron James layup, he came up limping. The fear is Holmgren tore ligaments in his foot, which means he may need surgery. We now have an update to an incredible story we brought you earlier this week. More than 40 sweet beagles were sent to the Inland Northwest from a breeding operation in Virginia. Our news team spoke to the Spokanimal staff last night, and they have received about 800 applications to adopt all of those cute pups. Now they are going through the process of sorting through the applications to find the best possible forever homes. I made a commitment that would provide student debt relief, and I'm honoring that commitment today. Using the authority Congress granted the Department of Education, we will forgive $10,000 in outstanding federal student loans. It's the big announcement from President Joe Biden people are still talking about today. His administration is giving out billions of dollars in student loan forgiveness. And today we're learning more about who exactly this will impact. So if you received a Pell Grant, which is usually reserved for undergraduate students with the most financial need, the federal government will cancel $20,000 in loan debt. If you did not receive a Pell Grant, you will then be forgiven $10,000. Now keep in mind that forgiveness is only applying to those who earn less than $125,000 per year. Another component of the relief program is that the student loan payment plan pause will be extended one final time through December 31st of this year. Right now, 43 million people have federal student debt, with the average sitting at nearly $38,000. The White House estimates Biden's plan would erase the federal student debt of about 20 million people. Nearly 8 million borrowers may already be eligible, though, for the relief through the Department of Education. If the department does not have your income data, you can complete an application that the Biden administration will launch in the coming weeks. Right after the president's announcement, reactions started coming in from local politicians. So Washington Senator Patty Murray said tonight, tens of millions of borrowers across the country who've been saddled with student debt can sleep easier, knowing their balances will finally go down and millions will see their debt wiped entirely. So Eastern Washington Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers saying pretending President Biden can make de debt disappear with the stroke of a pen defies all logic and basic economics. Hardworking families cannot afford the taxes and higher costs that come with this radical plan. She went on to say the cost of canceling student debt is more inflation, higher taxes and increased costs. Now, of course, we first told you about the president's plan yesterday morning on Up With Krim. And within moments of the president tweeting out his plan, reactions started flooding in. So this morning, Krim 2's Malia Kamal is joining us live from Gonzaga with more on what students there are saying about the president's plan. Good morning, Malia. What are students there saying? Good morning, Channing. Yes, it's mixed reviews. Now, here at Gonzaga University, two thirds of students qualify for financial aid, which means they rely heavily on student loans to pay their way through college. Now, some borrowers are saying that the Biden administration could have done more, and others are saying hopefully this will lead to further conversations as to how we can tackle student loans. Um, and some students are saying that this will give them the opportunity to further their education. Now, a spokesperson for Gonzaga University says that there is no plan to drastically increase tuition costs with Biden's new loan cancellation plan. With board and room, the cost to attend Gonzaga University can cost a student $70,000. I mean, I think honestly, I wish that I just wouldn't have had taken out loans in the first place. Um, I think the cost of college in this country is ridiculous, um, and I definitely think that a higher amount would have been nice, but I definitely am appreciative that I at least got a little bit of loan forgiveness. 
Also, student loan relief has been extended through the end of this year. The Biden administration has said that nearly 8 million people may be able to um, uh, get their loans forgiven. Uh, now, the department is hoping that um, that they can, if you don't, if they don't have your information on file, there is a um, an application they're going to put out that will give you the opportunity to update that information. In Spokane, Malia Kamal, Krem2 News. To learn more about the loan forgiveness and who qualifies, you can text the word loan to the number 509-448-2000. We will send a link right to your phone.